Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is Into the Weekend with Bet DSI, the call we do every Thursday with Brent, the headlines manager at DSI, where we find out a little bit about what kind of action he's gotten on the upcoming football games for this weekend and what action he might expect to see uh, between now and kickoff. Brent, thanks for being here once again. It's good to be on, Peter. All right, let's start off with uh, the game tonight, Thursday night. Now, this will be released after that game has already begun. But I want to ask about it because it's such an interesting game because Pitt, you know, they had an outright loss to Youngstown State last week. And now, you know, they were a very small underdog on the road to Cincinnati. So were you just getting one-sided action on Cincinnati in this game? We were. You know, we, we talk about how, you know, we move the line bit by bit by bit until you eventually get some some comeback the other way. Right. This was a you know a classic example of Cincinnati being bet rather heavily at minus three, minus four. Uh, we went all the way up to six, and we sat at six for quite some time. Now we've had a lot of Pittsburgh money coming back at plus six and plus five. So right now we're at minus four and a half on Cincinnati with a total of fifty. Really, and is that coming the other way? Is that like public money, or is that just sharp guys? That's sharp money now. Hmm. I wonder who those guys are. Those guys who like bet it at three and now are just hoping for a middle, or are those guys who actually think that Pittsburgh plus six is a positive EV thing for them to do? Likely, it's a combination of both. Because there's guys out there who are, are, you know, what you might call a grinder or what have you, who who did lay the three and will now take the plus six. It just got high enough. And there's other guys who will say, look. You know, it's just good value with Pittsburgh at six. Hmm. All right, an interesting game. We'll see how it turns out. And then tomorrow, Utah and Utah State, that'll be a pretty heavily bet game because it's the only game on the card, right? It'll be heavily bet, and right now it's it's a game where we could get hurt on, Peter. Um, there's a lot of money we have, Utah minus seven. That was sharp money, public money, everything. Uh, that line went up to seven and a half. It's kind of been bet down a little bit, plus seven and a half with Utah State, but lots of sharp money on Utah minus seven. Really? The count has been like plus... Plus uh, about three to one, sorry, on Utah State now. So that's a lot of public money taking the seven and a half. Wow. Interesting. Interesting split. Usually you see it the other way. All right, then let's talk about some of the other games on, um, on the Saturday card. First, Purdue and Notre Dame. Now, there was a guy who posted on our YouTube channel that Notre Dame was going to be a great bet over Navy and that we were idiots for saying that Navy would be a good bet. And, of course, he was completely right. That same guy is saying that Notre Dame is going to blow out Purdue by 20 or more points. Uh, what's your action been on that game? Our money right now is dead even. We've got... Good action on that game. It's been quite heavily bet. All of the money on Notre Dame is practically at minus 14. All the money on Purdue is pretty well 14 and a half. So right. as long as it doesn't land 14, we'll be fine on that one, Peter. Right. And have the Sharps taken a position on that one? No, not really. That's most, mostly public money. Right. Not a whole lot of Sharps on this one yet. And then what about uh, the UCLA-Nebraska game? That's a very controversial game as well. People, some people are thinking that, you know, Nebraska is going to kill them by, uh, you know, 20 or 30. Other people are thinking that uh, UCLA should, is, is one of the classic home dogs in week two with, with value. What kind of action have you seen on that game? Well, I mean, Nebraska, this, in the last few years, they haven't been much of a defensive team. And uh, you figure that's going to be a high-scoring game. We've seen that total run all the way up from 57 to 61. And basically, we're at 61 right now on the total and haven't really got any money on the under. Our over count is really big, about 5 to 1 in terms of the number of bets we've had on the over. The money on UCLA came at 5.5. The money on Nebraska came at 4.5. And, and right now, we're using 5.5, just trying to get a little bit more back on UCLA. The money's been really good, less a heavily bet game for us, Peter. And uh, are, are there any games in the college that jump out at you as, as games that have definitely got a, gotten one-sided action where the Sharps and the public have both hit it? Well, the Utah game, like I said, we, we, we're going to get hurt on that. That's for Friday night. Most, you know, if it lands 7, that'll be terrible for us, of course. But in terms of the stuff on Saturday... Clemson is a very, very heavily bet game, mostly public money there. They drove that game from minus 24 all the way up to 27.5 where we're sitting right now. Uh, and, of course, when people have a, see a big line like that, minus 27.5, they usually bet the over. That's the case in this game here. Uh, another one where sharp money, we've got sharp money on Toledo plus 3.5 and really? the plus 3 minus 05. That's an interesting game for us. Um, wait, 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 wait hold on, hold on. you got sharp money yeah. on Toledo, huh? Sharp money on Toledo, yes. Because I, 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 I bet Wyoming pretty big on the opening, so maybe I should recommend Well, they, the proof, there, there's our proof right there, Peter. Sharp money on Toledo. Mm, not happy to hear that. <laughs> All right, please, carry on. <laughs> uh, what else would they come? Uh, Auburn was another one. Sharp money plus three and a half on, on Auburn. They're at Mississippi State. Mississippi State's favored by three right now. And, of course, LSU, you know, the typical LSU is going to get bet heavily. We've got about three to one count on LSU minus 23 and a half, sitting at 24 right now. Um, sharp money was actually on Arizona. They're at home to Oklahoma State. The when yeah. the line went to ten and a half on Oklahoma State, we had sharp money coming back on Arizona. And uh, kind of a, a strange one in is this added game between Akron and Florida International. We've seen 
so much action on the total. It's it's absolutely crazy, Peter. Really? More action on this game, this ad game total than we see on a lot of the major games that, in terms of their size. We've had huge action going over 51 and a half, and we've had some under action finally come back. We have to go all the way up to 56 and a half to get under money, but it's been insane. I guess, you know, like I said, if you move the line far enough, eventually you get come back the other way, and it was heavily bet on the over 51 and a half all the way up to 56 and a half, 57. Hmm, so that's got to be like sharp money, right? I mean, that's not public guys pounding the over on a, you know. Well, and it, honestly, it, it's sharp money both ways. You, you, you know, you've got sharp money that hmm. might, might not necessarily agree on something or looking for a middle. Like I said it was bet just kept getting bet 51 and a half, 52 and a half, 53 and a half, all the way up to 57 before we got any under money. That sounds to me like Dr. Bob or uh, Right Angle Sports or someone released it as a play. Uh, we don't name names here, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> right, or Billy. All right, and then um, all right, and then let's move on to the NFL. Uh, you know, what, what are some of the sharp sides? Those lines have been out for a while. What are some of the sharp sides, and uh, what is the public pounding? Sharp money, a lot of sharp money which was on Philadelphia, which is not good because the public is all over that. I'm oh, sorry, the sharp money on Philadelphia is on the over, the over 42, right. over 42 and a half. Yeah. It's sitting at 43 now, so it's finally kind of stopped there. A lot of sharp money on the over on that game. Public money is all over the Eagles' side. Uh, sharp money on Buffalo as well. They were betting Buffalo straight up on the money line. Now, uh, finally, you know, we've got some money back the other way, but the Jets were just terrible in preseason, so it's easy, easy not to like them. We had, interesting enough, we had Tennessee Titans. A lot of sharp guys are betting Tennessee to win outright. Hmm. The public's the other way on the spread. So if, if that game fell, say, say two and a half or whatever, or, or sorry, sorry, two or three or anywhere where it wasn't a middle situation, it would probably be pretty good for us. Like I said, a lot of public money on New England minus the five and a lot of Tennessee money on the money line. A lot of the sharp money is coming on the over 42 and a half on the Atlanta Falcons game, and I think people probably just take a look at the way they aired it out in the preseason and expecting that to continue, Peter. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. How about Miami-Houston? Because I would guess that you might, that might be a candidate for all-one-way all one way action, that the Sharps might actually think that uh, Houston was, uh, was a good bet, even at double digits, and the public would be in love with them. It's actually, you know, it's not really a, you know, a glamorous game just because Miami's involved, I guess, is <laughs> right, the reason right. why. Uh, we got bet quite big, minus 10, minus 11, all that on Houston. When we finally went up to 13, we got money back on Miami. Even at 12.5, they were taken back on Miami. So we've got a lot of action on that game, but it's two-way action. All right. And then before I let you go, you know, Peyton Manning returns and he makes his debut in Denver. He's a very small favorite, minus one and a half. So I might think that uh, that might be a game that would attract public action. Yeah, right now we're, we're balanced. And because it's an evening game, we're going to get a ton of action on that game. All right. So are there any uh, public burial sides on the horizon in the NFL where if they lose, uh, you know, the public's going to get buried? Well, those three that I mentioned, Peter, the the Eagles, uh, Detroit, and Chicago. Now, what a lot of people are doing with those three teams, they're putting them in teasers. So right. they're taking Philadelphia down to like two and a half, Chicago down to two and a half or three, Detroit down to one and a half. So those will be bad for us. And uh, the public will get, you know, get hit hard, I think, if New England loses outright and either of those three teams I mentioned gets beat. All right. Thanks for all this great information once again, Brent, and uh, we will talk to you again next week.